Hello everyone, thanks for coming to the webinar tonight. Uh, so first of all, uh, my name is Ben. I'm one of the tech support guys here at IDX Broker. I'm joined by Bao. He's going to be uh, you know, monitoring the questions that you have and uh, helping assist as well. So, But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. For this webinar, about IDX for beginners. So we're basically going to be going over the basics of IDX Broker, you know, showing you where important account information is stored, uh, where you can go to access the MLS data to create pages and widgets and uh, saved links on the account, as well as anything about that we have about some of the lead integration systems that we have, where you can go to organize and uh, collect lead data. So I'm basically going to be going over a lot of the essentials of IDX Broker, and um, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, so if you think of a question along the way, I'll do my best to answer it along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so when you first log into the IDX Broker account, you'll be taken here, which is the home dashboard. It kind of gives you the IDX Broker account at a glance, uh, the important features here. So noteworthy features on this screen are the features and notices section. Uh, so this is where you're going to be receiving notifications of new webinars that we've got scheduled, uh, new features that we've added to IDX Broker, as well as anything in regards to your MLS feed. So they'll be coming through here, but they'll also show up as these uh, yellow sticky notes over in the right-hand margin as well. If we continue down here on this page, you will also see a box for your most recent leads that have come in. Uh, so it'll have their name, their email address, and when they've signed up, as you'd have that information at a glance here. You've also got uh, charts for your overall traffic of your IDX broker pages. Uh, this is in the form of a line graph, it will show you how many times your IDX broker pages have been clicked on and viewed over the past 30 days. And then you would also have a breakdown of uh, your most popular types of pages in the form of a bar graph here. So you have that information available. Down here below in the site navigation section is we've provided quick access to any of the links to your search pages, your contact pages, or if you have a team level account, we've also provided a link to the roster page. So for example, if you just wanted to grab the link to your advanced search page, you can just grab it here. It's also located a couple other areas as well, and I'll show you where that's at later in the walkthrough too, uh, but we provide it here for easy access. And those are the main areas of the, the dashboard here. I also like to show people, uh, you can create what are called quick links. Uh, they're essentially shortcuts to certain parts of your IDX broker account. So for example, if you know you're always gonna come in and check on any leads that come in, we'll just go there. And then um, if you're always coming to this page, for example, you can just go over here to the upper right-hand corner, click on that, and then click on quick link and you get that notification from the IDX broker system. So when I first come to the dashboard and when I first log in, I can just click on this link and then just be taken straight to that page. Saves you a couple of mouse clicks down the road and uh, I like to show people that just to make a shortcut. But if you needed to get rid of it, you could just hit the trash can icon too. That will remove it from the dashboard. While we're talking about the upper right hand side here, this is going to be on every one of your IDX broker pages. So if you ever need to reach out to us for support, I advise you'll have this five digit number that's next to your name. It'll look different uh, than the one that's here. But basically this is the account ID number. So in case you need to reach out to us for technical support, had questions about the functionality of the site, um, or just anything in regards to the MLS data. If you include this number, if you respond to us via chat or you know, give us a call or send an email our way and just include that number, that helps us pull up the right account so we can get in there and help you out as quick as we can. From there, let's move on to the account section. So if we go to account and then if we go to account info, up top here is the primary account information. Again, this is going to look different on your account. And it's going to have the website address and the company name and the client name. And this is the data that we reached out to the MLS board with in order to get access to their MLS feed. And down here below in the account section is what we refer to as the display information. So this is what's going to show up alongside any of your IDX broker contact forms. Or you know, if somebody did a search using IDX broker and they wanted to reach out to somebody about a particular property, this is the information that would display. And you can go in here and change it to whatever you need it to be. So, you know, for example, I know a lot of people rather than use their own personal name uh, for the display name, they'll put their agency or their brokerage. So, you know, you can change that. Uh, so you can need changes to whatever you need it to be. Anything that, that has an asterisk, though, is a required field. So, for example, I couldn't leave, you know, the address field blank. 
if I tried to save that, they would come back with an error. I would There would have to be at least something in the address field in order for that to, to register. Also, I should mention this email address is what we have saved on the IDX broker system as the primary email. So this is the one that would be receiving notifications from the IDX broker system about new leads that have signed up or you know if a lead has saved a property to their account and then something about that property updates. This would be the email address that receives all those automated messages from the system. I like to warn people of that in case it's you know their personal email that's in there and if they wanted that to be a, a business email instead. Back up here to the primary account information. If you needed any of this information to change, you know, your website address changes going forward if you switch companies down the road. That request would just need to go through our MLS team at mlsinfo at idxbroker.com, mainly because we would have to reach out to the MLS board with this updated information, and we would CC you along with that process too. Basically, we just let them know what you needed to be changed to. They'd change it on their side, and then we would have permission to go ahead and change it on ours. So just another step that's involved there. If, uh, you need to update that. Also under the account section is where you can access anything in regards to your billing. So we just go to account and then billing here and then click on information. Uh, this will have the payment on record over on the left hand side here. And then over on the right is, uh, you know, the account standing, when the last payment is made, and then when the next scheduled payment is going to be. This is my demo account, so I don't have a card on file here, but you would you'd be aware of the, when the next uh, anniversary date is. And we scroll down here. We break up our invoices on a monthly basis since we're a month-to-month -month business. So the current invoice would be the upcoming charge for your IDX broker account. Uh, and then we break it down in terms of uh, what you're being charged for. So it would tell you, you know, the recurring charge for the account level and whether you have an agent add-on. And then if the MLS has a data management fee, that would also be included in the uh, invoice as well. You can also pull up any ones from the past down in the history section. Basically, once they start feeding through, there would be this option down here below, and then you can click this arrow. It will be over on the left-hand side, and it will expand it out and then give you the details of what you were charged for as well. And then you also have the option of either printing off a physical copy or emailing a copy to yourself for your own records if you need that too. Also, if you needed to update the payment on the IDX broker account, that's located under billing as well. You can just find it under add edit billing, and then this is where you can go to put in a new card number, if you need to change the expiration date going forward, uh, this is where you would go. And I know a number of our clients, they prefer to call in for that sort of thing for security reasons. And we're happy to change it over the phone too. I uh, just if you wanted an online option, this is where you would go. Let's see. Also under the account section, if you go over here, this is where you can go to change your password. So you would just put it in twice, then hit the blue button, and then it would update the password for your IDX broker account immediately. Uh, if you go to the message center, that will pull up any emails that are coming to or from the IDX broker broker account. So it would have, you know, support emails or any emails that go out to your leads uh, from the system. You'd be able to check in on that. And what's really nice about that is you're also able to check and see the status of the email, whether it's been delivered or not, or whether the email has actually been clicked on and whether it's been opened as well. So it's kind of a good way to get a pulse on your leads and make sure that they're following up with you. That's Those are the main areas of the account section. I should also note that if you ever needed to upgrade or downgrade your account at any time, that's located here too under the Upgrade Center. So currently I have my account set at a platinum level, but you can also downgrade uh, to a light and then it will tell you the differences in price and everything there. Also here is if you needed to get more seats uh, for your accounts, like cre create a team level account, or if you have a small office or something like that, uh, it's located under the Upgrade Center as well. From there, let's move on to designs. So from here, this is where you're going to be building out any of your pages, widgets, and save links that implement the MLS data. With save links in particular, I like to describe them as our version of landing pages, mainly because when you create a save link, you're going to create a page based off of a search. And you know, based on the parameters of that search, it will return a link to the page based on, and then it will give you results of that search. So basically, when people click on that link, they'll be able to come to a page that will display whatever you set the parameters of that search to. Is there a way to filter the messages by leads? Yeah, yeah, to answer your question, if you go into the account to the message center, if you wanted to filter it by leads specifically, there's this link here where you can filter the messages out and then you can select the category and it will have all the different categories you have. So if I wanted to pull up any of the lead emails, I could just do that and then hit apply. I mean, this is my demo account, so I don't have any currently, but you would be able to sort it by that too. Let's go to the design section here and then we'll go to pages first. I'll show you how to build out a save link in just a little bit. And then this will take you to the landing page that has all of your IDX broker pages that we have. And the, the, we divide them into their different subcategories. So, you know, you've got your search pages here, details pages, contact pages, and so on. And if you ever needed to grab the link to any of those pages, that's just found in this column here. And then you would click link 
in order to get the link. So if I wanted to grab the link to the advanced search page, I could just click here. And then this would be the URL that I would use and you know either share via email or uh, put in my website navigation, whatever it may be, this would be the URL that I would use for that. If you ever needed to edit any of the settings of your pages, uh, that's most often found here in the preferences column. So I'll just click on edit here to change the page preferences. And it will start you off in the SEO settings tab. If I wanted to adjust the advanced search page here, I can change you know, the page URL. If I wanted that to be different than what it is by default, um, I can also change the page name. This will change how it's saved on the IDX broker system. This is also where you can go to add in meta tags in order to get better site visibility on search engines like Google or Bing. Basically, there's a number of things you can do using IDX broker to increase your SEO ranking. So if you're interested in that, there's a, there's a good article on our support knowledge base that goes into that in more detail. But this is just one of the things you can do for that. Also, if we go to the search setup tab, now I have a platinum level account, uh, so I'm able to change the default parameters of this search. If I had a light level, this would be restricted. However, at the light level, you still have the option of creating a, what's called custom city, county, or postal code lists. So this is really good for maybe limiting down the number of cities or counties or postal codes people are allowed to search through. So there's a number of things you can do to get that set up. When we first set it up, it's just going to be pulling in everything from the MLS. If you have a platinum level account, you can also go up here and then change any of the default parameters of uh, your search pages. So maybe I wanted to have people start off looking for rental properties. Maybe I didn't want the minimum and maximum price to be like this too. I can just remove that. Maybe I just wanted to be nice and open, but you get the idea. You know, you can set this to whatever you need it to be. What's also nice is you have the option to hide particular fields too. And this is really good for, say I didn't want people to have the option to switch property types. I only wanted them to look for residential properties. I can just go up here then click on hide. And so basically with this, it will hide that property type as an option. And then anyone coming to that page will only be allowed to change these fields. Can you reset a light account to go back to default? It depends. You know, the, I know that with a lot of the accounts, you can reset the MLS settings, you know, for your search pages, for example, there'd be an option to, you know, reset to the MLS defaults. I mean, that that is an option. It depends on exactly what you're wanting to reset it to. It's usually found within the settings of, you know, if it's a page or a widget, you can restore it to what it was before. There's also a tab here for lead registration, but basically, like I like to show people another place you can go. Um, it's just going to be located under leads and then lead registration preferences. But it's also nice to know that you can do it at the page level as well. If you have a platinum level account, it allows you to get really specific of whether you wanted to request or force leads to sign up with you on specific pages. But we'll get into that in more detail later. For now, let's go back to pages. And if you wanted to play around with the template that any of your pages are using, you could go to the layout column here then click on edit and it will show you the current template that's being used for the IDX broker page. So when we first sign up our accounts and you know activate them, they're going to be set to the mobile first template. And this is often the one that I recommend people stick with just because it's the newest one that we've made on our side and it's also mobile responsive. So if somebody's viewing this on a mobile device, uh, you know, iPhone, iPad, whatever it may be, it's going to automatically shrink down to fit on that screen. That's that's usually why I recommend people stick with that. But you have these different templates to choose from here. So if you wanted to test out what it would look like with the checkboxes, all you would have to do is just click activate here, and then uh, it would update. You get the notification from the system, and it would update uh, for your IDX broker pages. You can always go back and switch it to what it was before. Uh, you just click on activate, then it'll automatically switch it back on your side too. I know that at least for this search pages, I recommend sticking with the mobile first ones. But for example, for your details pages, there's a lot of different templates to choose from there. So if we go down here, then look under details pages, if we click on edit, just wait for that to load here. Yeah, so you know, we have a gallery here, maybe you wanted to focus on the pictures. Um, I know that down here at the bottom, there's a more modern looking one. So they have the picture set as sort of asymmetrical It's a little bit more modern that way. So there's a number of different things that you can play around with here too. So for now, let's go back to pages here. And you know, the pages on our side, they're hosted on our servers. So you would get the links to those pages in order to put them on your website. But if you wanted to put something on your homepage, for example, Example, that's what widgets are really good for. So if we just go to widgets and then manage, you could come to this page here and we'll have any of the widgets you've created on the IDX broker side. And we create our widgets using uh, JavaScript code. So in order to put the widget on your site, for example, you would just need to go over here and click on this icon to view the code. And then it will give you this HTML that you would copy and paste into your website where you want that to show up. I know that with you know WordPress or Squarespace or other kind of platforms like that uh, to build out your website, they'll have a section where you can put HTML code. And then this is basically what you would copy and paste into that if you wanted to put the widget on a 
particular page, for instance. So you can also create new widgets of your own. Best way to do that, if you're already on this page, going over to Add Widget, or you can go to Designs, Widgets, and then Create. Basically, it's just going to take you to the same place. And from there, we choose a widget that we want to build, by clicking Select Type of Widget. I'll show you how to build out a Showcase widget. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in some properties, and basically what's going to show up is uh, these little tiles that will go across your web page and then show the primary uh, listing photo and then the address and the price um, along with that too. Millie, to answer your question, yes, you can modify the Quick Search widget. If you wanted to do that, here, I'll just go back there real quick. If you wanted to do that, there's there's an icon that you can click on within the settings on, on this page here. So if I wanted to modify the quick search, I could just go here to click on edit widget, and then it will open up with the widget options here. And then here's where you can go to change you know, the property type, default minimum, maximum price. You can also choose whether you want certain fields to show up, or you can also hide particular fields. If you didn't want people changing the price, for example, I would just select this to hide, and then people wouldn't see that as an option. And then you can also exclude certain fields altogether as well. So yeah, if you needed to modify any of that, this is under widget options would be the best place to go for that. But yeah, let's go back to that widget here. Okay, yeah, so I'll show you how to build out a showcase widget. It will give you the option to choose which properties to feature. So I'll open that up. And then you have these different options to choose from. Now, if you see anything on the IDX broker side that uses the word featured, like featured IDs, featured page, featured widget, whatever it may be. These are going to be the properties that are tied to your agent ID we have on the account. Basically, whatever properties where you are the primary listing agent and whatever properties are active. But basically, anything that you see that uses the word featured on the IDX broker side is what pull through there. Lacey, to answer your question, it may include sold listings. I know that on the IDX broker side, there's a couple, you know, we're, we're getting sold data for a number of MLSs. Best place to check and see whether you have you know access to the sold data would be under account and then upgrade center so I'll just go there in another tab and then it will give you the indication of whether we have sold data available from the MLS or not so if you wanted to search by sold data that might be restricted based on what MLS you have there and going back to the widget here so we went over a featured properties here real quick but you can also do polls from the MLS data as well and the best way to do that would be under the custom search option and then we would choose the search page to use and uh, for building out widgets and also for building out save links I usually advise people go with the advanced search because that's the one on the IDX broker system that will pull in those MLS specific fields like neighborhood, subdivision, whatever it may be. So if we go to advanced search, it'll take you to the second step here. And then from here is where you're going to be determining what properties you wanted to display in the widget. So maybe I wanted to pull in residential properties. Maybe I didn't want there to be a restriction of the minimum and maximum price. Max days listed is a really good field. This is good for if you want to show newest listings. So maybe I only wanted to pull in residential properties that have been the MLS for the past 30 days. Uh, so you have that option available here. And so we got all the basic fields up top. And then if we go down below, these are going to be the fields that we have tied to the MLS. So, you know, I have like a California feed here. So it's going to be, you know, looking at a particular area. But basically, you can just go down here and choose from a number of different options. And then, you know, this is just going to be updating with the MLS as well. So we just go, let's see what uh, Apple Valley looks like here. So I'm just uh, going to check and see if we're coming back with any results there. Okay, so it looks like we're coming back with a few in Apple Valley. So we've got that there. Okay, yeah, and if we're happy with the, with the results, we could just continue down here to the bottom. And under widget options, you know, you would just continue building out the widget, give the widget a name, you know, change the sorting order if you wanted to. Um, I'll just call this one IDX test, for example. You have these different sorting options to choose from. Maybe you wanted to sort it by price or bedrooms, bathrooms, whatever it may be. So you have that as a sorting option. Under number of columns, you can, this is for determining how many of those tiles will show up in a row before it breaks down to the next line and then shows the next row. And then a uh, number of listings here. This is for if, you know, when you were creating the search up top here, if you were coming back with more than 100 listings, for the widget, we can only display 100 listings at a time, but you can also change that to whatever number that you need it to be. Maybe example, you wanted to limit it to the newest 20 listings, for instance. So you can restrict that down here as well. Yeah, Joey, to, to go over that, uh, we'll, we'll be going over that in just a second here. That That's going to be uh, saved links. So that will be where you can create landing pages for, for neighborhoods, for instance. Uh, Millie, to answer your question, if, what you can do is there's a setting on the IDX broker side where you can enable the map to show up on like your, your landing page, for instance. That's just going to be located here under Preferences and then Global Preferences. And then if we just go to Map, you can enable this setting here. It will say all results 
fields page maps and then you just hit that to yes and so then there will be a map that displays at the top of any of your results pages too so, but yeah let's go back to the widget here once you've built that out and got it down to what you need it to be you would just click the button here to build out the widget i've already got that in the system here so i'll just change that up all right and then it gives you that notification lets you know that it's been saved on the idx broker side and then it will down here in the third step it'll give you the code to you know copy and paste into the site basically wherever you put that's where the widget's going to show up you can also preview what it looks like too before doing that just by clicking this icon here you'll see here we've got you know them showing up in uh, tiles like rows of three and then uh, what's nice about the widgets or um, also the saved links that you create is it's going to automatically update based on the mls data that we have so if something leaves the market or comes on the market those are uh, going to update automatically so you basically just set it and then it's going to update uh, from the mls so it's basically this a very similar process to building out a landing page or a safe link as well if we go back up here to the top we'll just go to designs and then save links and then create and so then from there again i advise people go at the advanced search page and, and then this is where you can go to create like yeah joey what you said the landing page where based on a particular neighborhood or whatever you need it to be i i recommend going at the advanced search but what's also nice is at the platinum level you can go down here and then choose a polygon search in order to create that safe link too so if we just move on to the next step you know we've got it pulled up on eugene here and maybe I don't know the specific fields of that we're getting from the MLS, but I know that this neighborhood here, you know, it's right next to a golf course, so it's going to be really nice. Maybe I only wanted to pull in these listings. So what I can do is I can just draw a shape here. And then basically what I'm doing is creating a polygon, and it's only going to be pulling through these properties. Whatever is in this box here and highlighted is uh, what I'm going to be coming back with there. And then if you needed that to be more specific, you can choose you know, the property types down below, the price, bedrooms and bathrooms, and all those different features here. So that's definitely a good tool to have at your disposal if you have the, the Platinum level account. The difference being between the widget and the save link is that the save link will give you a link to a page that you would you know, like put on social media, like Facebook, or uh, you know, if if you wanted to put it in your website navigation, that's what a lot of people use our safe links for too. And that's kind of a good segue into uh, some of the lead integrations that we have. So there's a lot of things to explore in the design section, but let's go to leads right now. So if we go to leads, leads and then manage so this is where you would go in order to get you know access to any of the leads that come in that you know fill out the contact forms or if they wanted to save a particular property or you know a, ser a search to their account this is where their information would go basically you know you'd have their name their email address uh, when they've signed up their overall activity and whether they've created or verified their account for example then also you would have the particular searches and properties they have saved to their account too if i had you know any properties i'd be able to to click on this link and then I'd be able to see and check and see exactly what any of our leads are looking at there. It's also nice too because I can go in here myself and I can add properties to their account too. So maybe for example I've been following up with this lead, uh, talked about a particular property and I wanted to add it to their account. I could just you know, add a save property, put in the listing number. And then when I do that and save the changes up, they'd be getting email updates about that property. And then all they would have to do on their side is just log in and then they'd be able to get the most up-to-date information about that particular property too. So that's where they would go under leads and then manage. And then if you wanted to control particularly where or like, or how you're getting your leads, what pages you're asking them to sign up on, that would be under lead registration preferences. That's the best place to go. So if we go there, when you first set it up, it will start you off on the simple settings and when we first activate our accounts they're always set to be conservative that means the only way you're going to be getting their lead information is if you know somebody's logging into the account or filling out those contact forms and saving properties on their own but you can use the slider bar to set it to be a more balanced or aggressive approach based on your overall lead capture strategy if we had it set to balance for instance maybe i had it set up so that I'm somebody visiting the site and looking at this search page five times. And then after the fifth time, what would happen is there'd be this notification that would appear on the screen. And if it's set to be balanced, it's just going to request that I sign up. Uh, for an account. That being the case, if I wanted to, uh, if I didn't want to provide my information, I could exit out of that notification and then it would, I'd be able to continue looking at the page I was already on. If it was set to be aggressive, however, it's actually going to force someone to sign up uh, for an account. Uh, so if I tried exiting out of that same notification, it's just going to take me back to the previous page that I was on and it wouldn't allow me to uh, continue viewing the content. But I had it set up to be custom because that's the way I usually recommend people go with because that allows you to have full control over um, where you're asking your leads to sign up and everything like that. So if we go here, then click on customize settings, it'll take you to the sign up page. 
where you can go and under current sign up form preview is where you can go to adjust the default fields or basically control the information that you're getting from your leads. So when we first started off, it's going to have name, email address, and phone number, but you can add additional fields by clicking this link here and then expanding this out. Maybe I want to include zip code as well, maybe an additional email. If you wanted to create your own custom fields, that's just in the other section here. A lot of people use this for getting information like, are you a buyer? Are you a seller? Things like that. A lot of people use it for that. But if I want to include zip code, I can just click on that. I can choose whether it's a required field or not just by checking the box. And I'll just hit submit. And then you can see that the uh, zip code is now included on the form. If I wanted it to be someplace different, I can drag and drop it, place it where I want it to be. I can remove it if it turns out I don't need it after all. I can also add uh, edit additional fields by clicking this link here. Maybe I wanted to make last name required after all. I can just go in here. And then I could just check this box. And then uh, it's going to update and then make that field a required one there. Okay, I'm just looking at Lacey's question here. Does all of this information directly send to the individual agents via email? Good question, Lacey. So what will happen is if you have a single user account, these emails would be going to the primary email we have listed on the account. If you have a team level account, what you can do is you can do what's do contact routing and then choose specific agents. Maybe you want particular agents to get lead notifications on like safe links, or maybe you just wanted them to go in a circuit, like just the next one in line. And then whatever email they have linked to their account is what, what they would receive, like if, if they had a new lead signed into their agent level account. This is where you can go to adjust the, the form here. If you have a platinum level account, I definitely recommend enabling social media logins as well. So this is you know good for rather than having your people visiting the site fill out this form, they can just link their Facebook or their Google account. So that's really handy for sure. You can also enable CAPTCHA. So this is really good for filtering out any spam bots and making sure that the leads you're getting are coming from actual people there. And then under SMS alerts here, this is where you can opt in to receive notifications of you know new leads or whenever a new lead comes onto the IDX broker account, you can opt in and provide a phone number to receive an SMS message. And then that would have, as soon as they come in, would have the name and the contact information and it would allow you to basically reach out to that lead as soon as you get it in. Yeah, so that's a really, that's a new feature that we've added there too. So definitely advise taking advantage of that if you have a platinum level account. So this is um, where you can go to control what type of information you're getting from your leads. But you also have good control over uh, specifically where that notification shows up. And then the best place to go for that would be here under global registration rules. So if we go there, you'll see that they divide them into the different categories again. And you know, what I've seen people do is they'll leave their search pages and the results pages open. They let people use the IDX broker service as a information gathering tool. But for example, if you wanted to make it so that when somebody's looking at the specific details or the pictures tied to a property, you can specifically either request or force that they register on those type of pages. So that's what at least what I've seen a lot on uh, my site here on the, the support team. And if I want to say request that they register on the details page, I can just check this box. I'd set whether I wanted it to keep showing up or uh, only show up the one time. That would just, I'd, that would just be non-reoccurring. If I click on that, this option would open up over on the right. And then this will determine how many times, you know, page is viewable before that notification shows up. So if I wanted it to be the first thing people see when they come to that page, for instance, I would just set it to zero. But you know, you can set this to whatever number you need it to be. This option down here, and, you know, if you have a form already set up or if you're using something like a CRM uh, and you're using that to capture your lead information, you can check this box in order to redirect people to that page rather than our IDX broker form. So if you have something like that set up, you would just provide the URL that you want people to go to. And that makes it so that you're not having to juggle between two different sets of leads, like what are saved on the IDX broker side versus what you have saved uh, uh, somewhere else. You can also adjust the, the message that shows up alongside with that too. This is the default message that will appear with the notification, but you can set it to custom and then uh, basically just put in something a little bit more personalized if you wanted. Uh, there's a lot of different options here and you have a lot of control over where and how you capture your leads. And I know that there was, that was a lot of information uh, coming all at once here, but let me make sure if you don't have it already, I definitely recommend going to this page here. So it's our academy page, which is at learn dot idxbroker.com and this really helped me out 
a lot when I was first starting out. It's where we've got all the webinars we've got uh, in the past, and so this one will be saved here as well. And then it's got step-by-step -step tutorials and courses on how to get things set up using the IDX broker system and you know quick YouTube videos and things like that. So at least for me, that, that really helped me out a lot because I like to have something to go along with when I'm getting things set up. So yeah, I definitely advise checking that out if you haven't already. But if you needed more uh, personalized technical support, uh, there's a number of ways you can reach out to us. Like I said before, um, if you're already logged into the account, you can go in down here into the lower right hand corner and then uh, just click on this green icon and it will push you on with one of our tech support reps on chat. Uh, that's probably the quickest way to get a hold of us. But you can also reach out to us via email. Best email to use would be uh, help at idxbroker.com. Also, we ha if you needed to reach out to us via phone, the support line is 800 421 9668 and then that'll put you on with one of our tech support reps our hours are from you know we're open monday through friday so we're not open on the weekends and then we're operating on pacific standard time so then our hours would be from six o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the afternoon so that's the best time to get a hold of us if you had any more specific questions but i hope i you know gave you enough information here to kind of get started let me look at the chat and see it looks like uh, bow's been answering a couple of your questions already but Lacey um, has a question for me Okay, yeah, let me take a look at that question. Create a setting in which we approve or disapprove on a case-by-case -case basis. Some of our sold listings we don't want to display. Or perhaps we can limit by price area. Yeah, I mean, in reference to the quick search widget, that's kind of limited in regards to how many customized fields you have available there. But for instance, if you wanted to change something um, in a showcase widget, again, you can create any of those custom search pages and whatever criteria you put into those search pages is what you'll be able to filter by that way. So if you upgrade from light to platinum, those options would be available to you at that point. However, if you downgrade, like if you go from platinum to light, then those options would go away. And then those widgets would no longer work there. So if, if you needed to, uh, you can upgrade at any time, upgrade or downgrade at any time. So yeah, just be mindful of that going forward. Yeah, to answer Joey's question, yeah, we do have a WordPress integration. There's a widget, I mean, not a widget, uh, a plugin that we have that you can download. It's called Impress for IDX Broker. And so with that, there's using that plugin, there's a number of different widgets that are exclusive to that. So for instance, like the Omnibar widget or uh, you know some of the specific Impress showcase widgets and things like that. They're only available on the WordPress platform. But if you have uh, some other means, you can create as many of those widgets on the IDX broker side as well. And then as long as you have some place where you can put that HTML code, that's, that's where that widget's gonna show up. Okay, any other questions? Oh, if you're building on a non-WordPress site, um, you'd be able to, so like for our pages and uh, what we provide, we do host them on our side. So, you know, for the domain, it would be, it would have IDX Broker in the title, but you can create what's called a uh, custom domain. Sorry, let me go back there real quick. So if we're logged into the account and if we go to account and account info, and then there's a section down here called subdomain slash domain control. So you'll see that I'm using the default subdomain, which is, you know, my name, and then it will have IDX broker in it, but you can set up a custom domain. And then that will make it so that instead of it having IDX broker in the website address, it will just have, you know, you could set it up to be like search dot your website or IDX dot in your website, uh, something like that. And there's a really good support article that you can uh, get to from here too. So if you just click on this question, for SEO purpose, uh, for that, it would actually, um, you know, it would give the credit to your site in that case. If you needed to explore like the different SEO options we have available, if you go to our knowledge base, which is at support.idxbroker.com, there's an article that we have on search engine optimization. And then this is a really good, ba basically a roadmap on how to take advantage of that. And one of the best things you can do is by creating that custom subdomain. And then that really helps out with getting that credit back to your site. If any of you think of any questions going forward, please reach out to us again. Uh, again, the quickest way is just uh, via chat down here in the bottom right. But you can give us a call at 800-421-9668. And then uh, also send an email to our support team, which would be at uh, help at idxbroker.com. And then, uh, yeah, like I said before, this will be recorded so you can come back to it later. If you needed to get a refresher on some of the, the basics we just went over today, that will be available to you too. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot. Please let us know if we can help you any further, okay? All right, bye-bye.